Let's begin by understanding the error boundary component. It is a React class component that catches JavaScript errors in any of its child component trees. When an error is caught, a fallback UI is displayed to the user, and the error is also logged for debugging purposes. The constructor initializes the state with has error set to false, indicating no errors initially. The static method get derived state from error is called when a child component throws an error. It returns a new state with has error set to true, which triggers the component to re-render and display the fallback UI. Component did catch is another lifecycle method used to catch exceptions. It's a place where you can log the error information to external services. Finally, the render method checks has error state, and if it's true, it renders a fallback UI. Otherwise, it renders the children components. Now let's look at my component. This functional component is purposely designed to throw an error to simulate a problem within a component. In a real-world scenario, this could be due to a bug or an unexpected issue in the application. Since the error is thrown during the rendering phase, the component's return statement is never reached, and thus, the div with the text this will not render is never displayed. Instead, when this component is used inside an error boundary, the error will be caught, and the fallback UI will be shown. The log error to my service function represents an external error logging mechanism. Although this example uses console error for demonstration purposes, in a production application, you would replace this with code to log the error to an external monitoring service like Sentry, LogRocket, or your custom error logging system. This is crucial for maintaining application health and for quick responses to errors that users encounter. Finally, in the root of our application, we render my component wrapped inside the error boundary. By doing this, we're ensuring that any errors thrown by my component or any other component within this tree will be caught by the error boundary. So instead of crashing the whole app, the error boundary will gracefully replace the broken component tree with a user-friendly fallback UI, improving the user experience during unexpected failures. This illustrates the importance of error boundaries in React applications for error handling at the user interface level.